comedy not for the faint-hearted. Frankie Boyle's Tramadol Nights continues tomorrow night at 10. Right now, tabletop dramas in a Come Dine With Me Coronation Street special. Cherished Corrie characters. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Throwing four very different dinner parties. Oh, no. There you go, put your feet in. <laughs> oh, oh. And scoring each other to win a thousand pounds for charity. Oh. That's the mad. I have come to cleanse you of your sins. The madder. Oh, my God. Hello, cop. And the maddening. <laughs> He's dribbled, I've been spat at, <laughs> and he's farted. Oh. What's it like being a man with no manners, Ken? Firm to Kenny is a turn-on. Street, the longest running soap opera in Britain ever. The heartwarming saga of ordinary everyday folk. <laughs> Except when this bloke was on set. Bonkers. Meet the man behind haphazard shopkeeper Reg Holdsworth. Our first host, Ken Morley. <laughs> General rules of behaviour are that, you know, you just don't run naked through the garden as it upsets the neighbours. They like to do it first. We're not narrow minded, uh, just flatulent. Shall we get on with the food? For dessert, Ken is making Eat and Mess, made with meringue a la better boys. That's his character's supermarket, for those not in the know. Bonkers. Well, it's, it's obvious to me who it is. And, you know, the man's mad. Perceptive contestant number two is legendary leopard print loving landlady Bet Lynch, aka Julie Goodyear. <laughs> Maybe the beauty or the beauty. As a guest, if I'm treated like a lady, then of course I'll behave like a lady. I don't suffer fools. If someone's getting on my nerves, I will tell them they're getting on my nerves. As my missus would vouch for, I'm not one to sit on the fence. Meet no nonsense competitor number three, the man behind bad boy bookie Des Barnes, Philip Middlemiss. The big stuff. Des like women, I like women. Des like drinking, I like drinking. Des like food, and I like food. Ever felt typecast? <laughs> Meanwhile, Ken's cooking apples with honey to make puree. He'll assemble the rest of his dessert later. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. So next, it's on to the starter. I hope that people don't think I'm twisted. Why would they ever think that? The first course is Ken's pâté obese and smoked salmon. Pâté very fat. That sounds nice. That sounds friendly. Friendly! Friendly! <laughs> it's definitely not friendly. Friendly! Sounds local. Our lineup's completed by former street loudmouth Kelly Crabtree. In real life, she's actress to Pele Dorgu, who's a bit more refined, apparently. I do think manners are important. I think there's, there's general qualities that everybody dislikes. You know, people that aren't very polite, aren't very gallant. Sit. See? Even the wife won't do that. And I should think not! Ken's pate is made from cooked chicken liver, onions and sherry. Looks, um, lovely. Don't you dare reject it. Let's hope the guests aren't as fussy. Pate prepped, it's on to the main. Chicken curry de Bangkok avec rice de coconut. So chicken and rice. All right, well, that'll take some cooking. No. There's nothing on, on here that I've ever eaten. Or I would think anybody else has. You're not giving them salt, have you, Mr Marley? I mean, you could, you know, it could harden people's arteries, could that? Have that, then. Or it could lower your score. Ken combines two spoonfuls of ready-made curry sauce with onions, tomatoes and chicken. The final ingredient, ketchup. Amazing. His next job is a spud-based accompaniment. They're so good. Mmm. Great and raw. Luckily, his guests won't have to. Ken boils potatoes in chicken stock and red wine, then dresses with cream. Mmm! Oh, that is the best thing ever. You're not acting now, Ken. Good God. Shut up. 
Ah! Chop, 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 chop. All that remains is to assemble the starter, and he's ready to greet his first guest. And here she is. She's former street seamstress, Tupele. Tongue back in, you dirty old man. Hello. Oh, <laughs> look who it is. Hello. Oh, he's old. <laughs> how are you? Um, stand up, Ken. Oh, you are. Oh, Come in this Thank way. Thank you very much. Welcome to my little home. Oh, lovely. There's nothing better than sitting to a beautiful woman. Oh, bless you. Uh, yeah, you keep moving, to Pele. You look ten times better in the flesh than you do on the telly. Oh, Ken. So, and you've lost weight as well. <laughs> Really slim. Have I? Yeah. <laughs> you old smoothie. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Next in is former Corrie Casanova, Philip. <laughs> Mr. Morley! Come here, you. How are you, mate? How are you doing? Good, good. You're you? looking good. I'm not yeah, too bad. Good. I've got to ask this. <laughs> when did you leave? About six months ago. I didn't even know you'd gone. I thought you were going to say, so I didn't even know you were in it. <laughs> <laughs> is that six oh, months I knew ago? I yeah. it's all right. She's young enough to be your granddaughter. Unlike guest number three, the nation's favourite landlady, Julie. Oh! Do you think he's pleased to see Julie, her? Julie! Kenny! Come here to me. Oh, darling, you shouldn't have. I wanted to. <laughs> you oh, haven't changed one iota. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, mm. Can I just... Mm. Mm, perhaps just again. That's enough. Far too much, more like. Oh, oh look me. at that. Cheers, to the future. Oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, pack it in, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up... <laughs> a Corrie Curry calamity. If I'd ordered it in a restaurant, I wouldn't be very happy. A Morley Morling. Oh, Accept me. No, no, I can't sell it. Oh. And a ticking off from Tupelé. Enough. You don't need mothering, you don't need looking after. I was not going to let Ken lower the tone. <laughs> Tonight, Corrie's stalwart Ken Morley is throwing a dinner party for three fellow former stars of the street in a bid to win a thousand pounds for charity. Or at least he would be if he hadn't disappeared. <laughs> I think I'm thank, used to it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm used to thank it. you. Oh, there he is. Still got his own teeth. <laughs> I can still get up, Philly. Have you noticed? You're not I'll be bad back kid. in a day. Not bad, kid. Talk amongst yourselves. Thank you. It's curtain up on Ken's first concoction. This is where I reveal my easy entree. I'll just uncover them. As you can see, they look quite nice, very colourful. Bit of seasoning. Lovely. I'll just take the first two in, <clears throat> and I want you to listen to the house of delight. There it is, a plate full of Bernie in buffet. Mmm, yeah. what a oh. delightful little grape. <laughs> You're not marking, Ken. <laughs> Nothing. I've just tried the first one. What? Mmm, oh, so tasty. Still not marking. Why, well, do you know? If you've made he that gone it, if it was here tonight, Phil, it would be in tears. Yes, tears of laughter. It was kind of. <laughs> Like you just knock something up out of the fridge. You know, like a plate of leftovers. When <laughs> you just have everything that's kind of left over and then you go, oh, I'll have that for my tea. Well, the salmon's yeah. very nice, Ken. I'm yeah. enjoying it. Uh huh. You see, now it starts. Did you pepper it? First and... the cynicism and now the grovelling. Something quite delicious and unusual. So you can't expect anything else, really, but I'm sure they're thrilled with it. I know they're dribbling now as we speak. Uh, not exactly. I ain't ill. I've got a very dicky tummy. <laughs> <laughs> Is no. the toilet anywhere near? <laughs> well, brace yourselves, because Ken's pressing on with Act Two. I'm just going to check the rice, and for this we use a special instrument called the finger. Oh, nice. Needs a bit more. Oh, no, not again. Oh. Good luck, everybody. Well, there it is. Corrie de Bangkok a la Morley finger, served with spuds in cream. Oh, oh, that that don't do that! This is a bad matter. <laughs> right, <Rattle> thank <laughs> you. Oh, does it smell lovely? Potato. See? Mm. No, I'm not. Oh, so what sauce have you put on the potato? My own. You're your own. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't to my taste. The potatoes. Where did you get the beef? Beef? It's chicken, isn't it? <laughs> That's not a good sign. 
little bit kind of stodgy-ish, funny texture. If I'd ordered it in a restaurant, I wouldn't be very happy. Back at the table, and Julie's having a stab at a normal conversation, recalling the time Margaret Thatcher popped in for a pint at the Rovers. As she was coming through the Rovers door and all the aides were sort of there, mm. um, I noticed that she'd got lipstick on her teeth, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> I just went... And she went... <laughs> and sorted it very quickly. Mm. Because I'd done that... She invited me to go to Downing Street. Mm. Oh. Didn't um, Mr Thatcher run his roving eyes across her <clears throat> not in considerable bosom? Not more than you'd have <gasps> done in the... Nice try, Julie. Yeah, I don't know why yes, you needed did. to bring that up. Can't. Well, did. Ken is he's very, very naughty. Um, you know, he's like, he's like a naughty schoolboy, really. So one day, Kevin Kennedy and I sort of decided to entertain the other actors by doing scenes from the Kama Sutra. Oh, God, yes. I was Romeo and he was Juliet. Oh. And the doors opened and in walked the head of Granada Television, accompanied by 40 Japanese executives, <laughs> as he announced with a loud voice, and this is where the actors entertain themselves. Isn't that awful? It's perfect. There is, like, this endless trickle of root humour. <laughs> But, you know, it, it's nice to see them all kind of having a laugh. You mean you're not? Well, maybe they'll find some common ground in a chat about their showbiz big break. My gran, bless her, used to just watch The Wrestling and Coronation <laughs> Street. And uh, my, I think my first episode went out on uh, February the 14th, Valentine's Day, and she died on the day it went out. Oh. But she knew... As a result got... of your performance, right? As a result of my performance. <laughs> That's terrible, <laughs> Ken. Stop it. <laughs> my sense of humour's a bit different. I must seem serious next to those three, though. I know Ken like he knows me, and if he'd have said the same thing, I would have probably come up with the same response. Slightly funnier, maybe. Well, here's some more funny stuff. Ken's pudding. It's a melange, as they say, of mixture of fruit, ice creams, and uh, meringue, and uh, we have to serve it now, otherwise it will just come run away to nothing. A bit like us, really, when you think about it. Excuse me, I'll just consider it. It's eat and mess, and for once, the hosts run out of silly things to say. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that is... <laughs> lost the powers of speech. <laughs> You're right, Ken. Do we need to call an ambulance? You're dribbling. Am <laughs> I? <laughs> Uh, what have I told you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you. Thank you. I'm very impressed, though, Ken. That shirt seems to absorb any liquid. He <laughs> 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 must have Whether it's wine, wine <laughs> or saliva. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, I can absorb and dust her. Please oh, no. stop. I think we should send her home. There was ice cream, there was raspberries, there was... Well, I don't know. I can only imagine what else. Ken tried his best. He's a very funny man and he's, he was a decent host. I'm going to give Ken a six. Six. I'm giving him a six. Six, 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 the number of the beast. What a coincidence. <laughs> It's day two, and two Pele's turn to host. And after last night, everyone's wondering how on earth she's going to cope with the unruly Mr Morley. Ken can come take things too far. You got your teeth in, Julie? And he does occasionally need reining, reining in. A lot of people would be offended by Ken, but does Ken care? No, not really. I don't think for a minute that he would be so rude. <laughs> <laughs> as to, to be so offensive or, or inappropriate this evening. You reckon? No, I think he'll be on his best behaviour. I should be very subdued tonight. Oh, yeah? Because I'm coming as Zadok, the Jewish priest. That's more like the Ken we know. Let's get on with the food, shall we? Tupele crushes biscuits to make the base for her dessert. Twice-baked ginger cheesecake. All right, I'm not a great dessert person, but that sounds... She's on course. That'd be very, very nice, I think. Mm-mm. <sighs> oh. Tupele adds butter to the bashed-up biscuits. I actually one time put far too much butter in and the base was really hard. And everyone was like, mmm, <clears throat> this is nice. Well, here's hoping that doesn't happen again. These look nice. I like my bases. 
Next, she makes a classic cream cheese filling, then bakes. Finally, she tops with a mix of sour cream, ground ginger and sugar before baking again. Dessert done, it's on to the main course. Apple stuffed pork with Dauphinoise potatoes. Delicious. I love pork. They'll go down very well with that. Mmm. Tupelé begins by making breadcrumbs. I have a feeling. Or at least tries to. I've got nothing to make the breadcrumbs with. Um. It's all in the preparation. Breadcrumbs prepped at last, she adds them to fried apple herbs and shallots, which she uses to stuff her pork. There we go. Next, she slices spuds. Dauphin nose potatoes. Dauphinese potatoes. Yes, actually, they're dauphinoise, which Toupelé cooks in milk and garlic. Very pleased with my potatoes. Jolly good. Let's get on with the starter. Goat's cheese and fig salad. Fig salad. I don't know what she's trying to do. I'll just put the figs to one side, I think. Some of these people, they're over well over 50. This could be fatal. Tupelé caramelises toasted walnuts, ready to add to the rest of the starter after the guests arrive. So, yeah, they were going to get ready. And here's the first of them. Former street smoothie Phil. Oh, Casanova. Hello, Hello. Oh, look at you. I'm all right, how are you? Yeah, very good. Oh, and the opening topic of conversation? Why, Ken, of course. No. When he dribbled last night, that made me laugh. I hope he didn't do it again. Oh, he'll do something. Oh, God, oh, without a doubt, he'll do something. Next to arrive at Two Pele's flat, Queen of Corrie, Julie, who's looking a bit lost. Don't worry, it is the right place, dear. <gasps> oh, hello. Oh, nice to see you. You're I'm lovely. Here. Oh, Thank Julie, you. now, do mind the, um... Oh, hey, there we go, the step, too late. If you want any intellectual conversation, I think now's the time... We can have it now. OK, I think now's the time to have it and get it out of the way. Oh, dear. Speaking of the devil... Be careful, darling. Good luck. Have you got nothing longer you can wear? <laughs> I'm from the Church of Redemption, honey, and I have come to cleanse you of your sins. Get in, you Come right the in there. Hey, baby, how are you? Mm, mm, you still look so good I could eat you. Is this a place? Yes. Now, Ken, do oh, mind the... Um, oh, oh, he's fallen down. Do that to me. Come in. Right. Oh, that's better. I thought it was... Because he was. He's always like a grand entrance whenever he can get... If anyone takes no... The best way is not to take any notice of him. Then eventually he'll go away. He's a bit like the flu. Stop it! Yes, I must. Come. No! Accept me! No! no I can't stand it! Oh. No. oh, sorry. Just a moment. Do we set your coats? Yeah. yeah, please, thank you. I tolerate him, you know. He swatted Luckily, Tupele has something to shut Ken up. Some music. When the night, when the night has come, has come. And I thought Ken's jokes were off key. And the moon, and the moon is the only light we'll see. We all joined in, you know. I mean, how could you not? It was it was just terrific. It was horrific. It was a good call, I think, just to get people relaxed and it's something different to talk about. And something for us to try to forget. Meanwhile, Ken's getting a talking to. Let's make the effort tonight. Pardon? Yeah, I agree. What yeah. Let's be make the effort. Yes, yes. be nice. Then, be nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never gonna happen. Nice try, though. Back in the kitchen, Tupelé is finishing her starter. A goat's cheese and fig salad with nuts on. Your voice sounds a bit... Um, oh, it's bit terrible. Tonight. It's embarrassing when you've only got a voice like this. Mm. Oh, it's actually... It. It. It's actually... It's actually... There's an advantage to mute women. <laughs> we wouldn't know what that is. <clears throat> Are these the figs? <laughs> yeah, let's keep it about the food, shall we? Gorgeous. Really, really tasty. Mmm. Show some enthusiasm. It's on the plate, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it? I ate all of my figs. I no doubt will suffer as a result. <laughs> That'll be the figs. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tupelé checks on her pork mane, which has been roasting. Oh, it's raw. Raw, 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 raw. And that means a pause in proceedings. 
And if the food doesn't arrive soon, I'm still not I shall eat one of you. <coughs> Cook. I'm not sure that's going to help. Bless her, it took her uh, longer than she thought, so it was about a 40-minute delay on it, by which I could have eaten Ken, but no, I, I wasn't that hungry, but... I think that's cooked. It doesn't look like this in the book. Oh, just serve it anyway. Apple-stuffed pork with dauphinoise potatoes and red wine sauce. Nice, thank you very much for being patient. You're very kind. No, no, no. Good, let's eat. My wife always likes a bit of sauce. The pork was worth waiting for. That was really nice. And with the Dauphin potatoes sliced with a nice cheese um, sauce, I thought, I'd, I'm very happy with what she did tonight. Yeah, clearly. The combination of the pork with the apples, mm, yeah. I think she deserves a round of applause. Absolutely. Oh, that's really kind. Blimey, a civilised Ken. Can he keep it up as the loveys discuss their favourite Corrie characters? And she's still there, so it would have to be Betty, Betty oh. Driver. Oh, yeah, Betty Driver, yeah. Betty. yeah. She was, like, my second mum at work. She took me under her wing, she looked after me, and I don't think she's changed one iota. <clears throat> Is there any chance of you taking me under your wing? No, oh, for the love of God, No, there's no. Enough. You don't need mothering, you don't need looking after. I don't need need knew it wouldn't last. I was not going to let Ken lower the tone. Uh, yeah, sorry, I told him off a little bit, but I think he'll get over it. I think he quite liked it. Firm to Kenny is a turn-on. An immediate turn-on. Well, I'm not sure that's what Tupele had in mind, but she now only has one course to get through. A bit of orange garnish and cue the twice-baked ginger cheesecake. Get your hand out the way. Thank you. Hopefully this won't be too... Mm. Hard. Hard? Yes. A few people said that. Stop me. it. Just eat. Go on, dig in. Dig in. Mm. I think Julie might need a chisel. Now, watch your teeth with that. I don't know whether it... I'm not sure whether it's supposed to be like this or whether it's something slightly wrong with it. Unlike you to be diplomatic, Ken. I'm, so, I'm sorry it's not to your eating mess standard. But on a scale of one to ten, oh, how yeah. sorry are you? <laughs> I've also got a gift token from the dentist that I need to use. <laughs> At least mine looks edible. Oh! Absolutely. Yeah, this is better. No. Yeah. Don't <laughs> spit it out. What are you doing? Dad? What are you doing to her? I don't know what I'm ready for him. He'd only enjoy it. Quick, somebody change the subject. People underestimate what an intelligent man you are, in my opinion. Well, it is pretty well hidden, to be fair. That's better. What an intellectual colossus. Would anybody like a coffee? Did you break wind oh, again? No, no, oh, no, 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 come no. on. Oh, dear God. Where are those taxis? Two thirds of the meal were very, very nice and, and very well presented. The last one uh, did really look like it had fallen from a giraffe's bottom. He was dissecting it and moaning about it, but he still seemed to eat it all. I'm going to score her an eight. A remarkable seven. Tonight, I'm going to give Tupele a seven. So, Tupele trumps Ken with 22 points. Coming up. Oh, ah! Some more odd fish. Oh, just... These bookers must be starving. <laughs> Coarseness from Ken. We thought you were from the escort agency. And it's ladies' night. Now it's my turn. We're full of the joys of Christmas. So, we're going to be fantastically festive and show how to make Christmas perfect in your home. Join Phil and Kirsty over four nights for some inspiring Christmas ideas. We've got all the right ingredients. It's a bit too tempting, really. Kirsty and Phil's Perfect Christmas continues tomorrow at 8 on 4. It's day three of the Coronation Street special, and next to host is ex-street Romeo Des Barnes, a.k.a. Philip Middlemiss. And he's bracing himself for the arrival of you-know-who. Molly. Ten. Molly! He's going to cut ten out tonight at my place, and he's going to be equally, if not more, Ken. 
50 keys of butter. But I'm quietly confident, and I've got a few surprises up my sleeve for them. A sedative for Ken, perhaps. On with the food, Phil starts by melting dark chocolate and loads of butter. Then he adds a generous glug of brandy. Steady, Phil. <coughs> you see? That makes the base of his dessert. Individual melt-in-the-middle chocolate cakes. Individual melt? Does that mean we have to melt it ourselves? No. Love all chocolate desserts, so, yeah, be good. Mmm. Phil adds sugar to eggs, then vanilla, and gives it some elbow grease. <sighs> he gradually adds the chocolate sauce and sieved flour, folding it lovingly. This, this is pure love and uh, attention, then. <laughs> die, Molly, die! <laughs> Finally, the mix is poured out and set aside to chill. There we are, my darling. Rest for a while. Dessert done, it's on to the main. Monkfish tails with apple and onion salsa. Are they dressed up as scampi or something? I'm not keen on fishy fish, which I know is a silly thing to say. You said it. Mind your head. Ouch! Phil coats the fishtails in a blend of paprika, Chinese five spice and salt. Join your puddings. For the accompanying salsa, he mixes apple, onions, herbs and white wine vinegar. Well, that's, that's how it is. That goes on top of the monkfish. Last job is tonight's first course. Black pudding and seared king scallops with shrimp butter sauce. Blech. Blood and fish, isn't it, really? I do not want to eat that. I love black pudding. Mm. Not as much as Phil. You can eat it raw. It's just as bad as delicious. He'll hopefully be cooking the black pudding along with the rest of the starter when the guests arrive. Finished, right? Uh, I better get it changed. There's just one final thing to sort out. On arrival, champagne and nibbles. <laughs> Here's the nibbles. Oh. Do you hear me? Oh, I'm well known. I love a nibble. Mm. This is the bit that I'm most excited about. There's no doubt about it. I can't wait. Well, here's someone who never refuses a nibble. The boss hog of bad taste, Cowboy Kane. Just a good old boy. Philly! No! Oh, oh, my Lord. Next in is former street troublemaker, Tupele. Yeah, I wouldn't do that when Ken's watching. Yeah. Oh, at last, hello, babe. Sanity. Hello. Mm. How are you? We're looking very good. Thank you. Mm. We thought you were from the escort agency. <laughs> oh, that's appalling, even by your standards. Sorry, What's it like being a man with no manners, Ken? <laughs> How dare you? Mm. Saved by the bell. Here's Julie sporting a comedy invisible dog lead. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey! Hello, <laughs> lad. How are you? Yeah, must be an in joke. No, no, not the tongue, not the tongue. Ugh. Fortunately, the host has a diversion, the nibbles. nibbles. So if you'd like to come in this way... <sighs> in oh. you come, please don't be afraid. What in God's name? do come in. What? Don't frighten them. When you have dead skin on your feet, these toothless carp will take all of that away. You, uh, Ken, it's only your feet can go in. Oh! Nothing, they'll only give you a nasty suck. Oh, no. No, it's just a tickle. So what I would like you to do... I'm not! You have to! It will be one of the most pleasant experiences you've yeah. ever had. I know you, Middlemuss. I'm not having me feet in there. Chicken! Sorry, no. Ken Morley, yeah. the brave man... You know what? He gives it all that. Gives it all. He's all that. Can't yes. even get his plates <laughs> of meat out and stick him in because one of them's wooden. <laughs> Good comeback. Very therapeutic. <laughs> Good girl. Go on, go on. <laughs> I've got you on your middle. No, no, no. There you go. <laughs> don't, make me do oh, don't make me do oh, it. Don't make me do it. What are you doing? Ah! Oh, that's me. Oh, no. oh, and they do nip. There's no two ways about it. Oh! Does it really hurt? Get them in! Does it hurt? If I've done it, you're young! <laughs> Get them in! <laughs> oh! 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 These buggers must be starving. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it took all my strength not to, like, freak out and whip my feet out. Well, the least you can do is drown my feet. Trying, like, exactly. Like, 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 Give up! Oh, he couldn't at least put a toe in. Ken's obviously got dragon feet. Oh, Ken! Sorry. Leave it. I just, no. Leave it. Be nice. 
The girl showed him up to Pelly straight in there. Look at Julie, man. She was brilliant. It just shows you, really, women are always um, quite ready to throw men into the field of fire for us, aren't they? Shameless strumpets. You're still a chicken. Pressing on with his prep, Phil fries black pudding in butter. Makes a brown shrimp sauce with more butter. Then cooks his scallops in, yes, you guessed it, butter. Hope everyone likes butter. What was that? Shut up, Ken. They're fantastic. And the starter is served. Black pudding and seared king scallops with shrimp butter sauce. So, it's a fishy evening, isn't it? <laughs> What's the, um... The... Is it butter? Yeah, it's butter, uh... It's a shrimp butter. I didn't really like the... Look at the prawns on top. Uh, yeah. Do you like black pudding? Uh, not particularly, no. Do not? Oh, yeah. that's a horrendous disaster for you then. No, it's, it's fine, it's, it's fine. fine. Don't know if I can eat the whole lot. Philip, it's good. Thanks, <laughs> I thought it was exceptional by anybody's standards. A gift from the gods. You always do for Ken. What have you done? <laughs> that's a big bullfrog. That's a bit harsh on bullfrogs. And it was like, that was one of those... Out, out with his tongue. Having hoovered up his starter, Ken's wondering where everyone would donate the charity prize. If you win this little compo, who you might donate your um, amount to? Well, mine's the Macmillan nurses. Oh, that's good. Very well. Sure. They're all worthy. Oh, that's of course. Absolutely. Well, my, I have such you know. an affinity with the Macmillan nurses because <clears throat> in 1979 I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Oh, You're joking. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm, I was. I only found that out because uh, I was working at Granada at the time yeah. and um, I was in the hospital having surgery and Bill Podmore phoned and he said, have you asked the surgeon how long you've got to live? Oh. And I said, <laughs> I haven't, that? you know. I really, I haven't. It, it, I, he said, well, come on, Julie, you know, we've got long-term story conferences. Oh, we no, need to know. Joke. Yeah. Yeah. No joke. No. I got the surgeon to come back and I said to him, I'm really, really sorry to trouble you, yeah. but could you possibly tell me how long I've got to live? <clears throat> and he said, well, I would say a maximum of a year, Julie. Totally. And I, I was absolutely delighted. <laughs> and I was so quickly on the phone, I said, oh, it's great news. He said, go on, kid, yeah, yeah. what is it? I said, I've got 12 months. He said, fantastic, <laughs> we'll get on with the conference. And, you know, mm. but that was it. And that's mm. the way it was. I don't think I'd have dealt with it the way she dealt with it. It's not, it's not a nice thing to hear. It gave me a, 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 a depth of compassion and understanding that probably I'd never had before. So wasn't I lucky? Yeah. Oh, well, and cheers. I tell you what, well, you no. And a sense of humour... Absolutely. ..really helps you through. My budget girl died of cancer. Oh, for so God's sake. <laughs> You're not too big for a good hiding, you know. <clears throat> you must have some serious bullshit. Let me find them. <laughs> Where are they? Are they here? I don't think it's... Excuse me. Good luck finding them. All right, let's go, monkfish. Time for more fish as Phil fries the main course. To keep the fish moist. Got to baste them. Consider them basted. Monkfish tails, apple salsa and veg. That's veg, not reg. Ah! <laughs> I love them. Can I kiss you? No, don't! Stop it, both of you. Sorry. Now. Sorry, I just, whenever I see Reg's glasses, actually, oh, we go that way. Philip. Yes, darling. It's food. It's absolutely superb, Philip. It was a uh, monkfish, which I'd never tried before. I liked the, um, what he'd rolled it in. Um, it was lovely, it wasn't too oily, and, you know, it was a nice piece of fish. The starter was fish. The main course was fish. I thought, there's only so much fish a girl can take. But I do remember Ken entering the green room at some point, and, um, Telling somebody that was sat there that they, he'd bought a hot dog for three pound fifty and it'd gone off. When I looked down, this certain person prodded it and went, "Oh, it, it's gone off. It feels like it's gone off." And then Ken withdrew the scabbard, and there was his um, yes. his old chap that he put through a hole <laughs> that he put through a hole in the carton. Table I remember I, Ken. I, I was doing a very serious <laughs> scene at the time. Uh oh, he's finally gone too far. It's been a, an interesting evening with, it, with the, the manners. I don't think that uh, Tapelli's quite used to that around the table. Oh, my God. Not that old chestnut again. 
Oh, it's just, you know, boring. <laughs> it's not funny. We'd be a bit shocked if he suddenly went sensitive or mannered or maybe kind. So that's Phil's night well and truly mauled, but there's still pudding to revive his chances of winning the £1,000 charity prize. Hello, baby. <laughs> he tops with a dollop of clotted cream and the individual melt-in-the-middle chocolate cakes are good to go. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it what? How do you make these? The Marks and Spencers. <laughs> What's that, a piece of something? Yeah, it's silver paper. Oh, well done, you've won! <laughs> Marks and Spencers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it's not Mark uh, Spencer stealing. It doesn't really say that. Yeah. Hope to see you again in about 2014. Why the rush? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, home time. Dessert was nice, um, and it did melt in the middle. It was very good, and uh, I liked it. The meal was wonderful. The starter was very good. The main meal was exceptional. But unfortunately, he fell down at the last fence. That was a lot of fish. An awful lot of fish, but he's done so well, and I would like to score Philip a seven. On tonight's performance, I'm going to give Philip an eight. He must have eight. So, Phil's fishy evening nets him the top spot. It's day four, and time for a spot of Rover's Return-style hospitality from Julie. She's hoping to upstage her rivals with the help of a mansion she's borrowed for the occasion. The pressure I know is on me because, you know, some of the standards this week have been very high. But as ever, there's one man to keep in check. He's dribbled, I've been spat at, and he's farted. Well, I've had one or two comments about my behaviour, but it's quite normal by my standards. My patience isn't... is wearing thin. Maybe with the one or two surprises I've got planned for, uh, for Kenny tonight, uh, hopefully he'll be kept in check. Only if one of them's a straitjacket and the other's a gag. For main course, Julie's making marinated pork ribs with asparagus and new potatoes. Hope they all like pork. <coughs> not great with ribs, though. I'm not that keen on barbecued sauce, so I'll see what she marinates them in. Bad luck, Phil, it's barbecue sauce with a dash of cream and brandy. Like that is looking good. Julie leaves the ribs to marinate. Next, she starts work on dessert, chocolate pots. Good girl. Bit heavy after marinated pork ribs. I don't know what that consists of or how big the pot is. Well, a wild guess says it consists of chocolate. Excellent. Julie takes a hammer to dark chocolate. Now mind your fingers. Oh, jumping chocolate. She melts it in single cream on a low heat, adding egg yolks, brandy and butter. Blend that in very, very smoothly. Finally, she pops the pots in the fridge to chill. And it's on to the starter. Avocado and prawn cocktail with caviar. Ooh. I knew the caviar would be in and you'd go... Cos you don't rush out doing buy a bucket of caviar every night of the week, you know. Well, this is duly good, yeah. She makes a cocktail sauce from salad cream, ketchup and pepper. She adds prawns, then the sauce to an avocado and tops with a spoonful of caviar. Quite simple, really, but delicious. All that remains is for Julie to put the pork ribs in to slow cook. I think I've done as much prepping as I possibly can in the kitchen for the moment. I want to now concentrate on my guests and make sure that, uh, shall we say, my, uh, my helper is in place and happy and knows exactly what to do. Helper? Crikey, he's wearing pants made from one of Julie's blouses. It's girls' night out, so please wear something saucy. I hope this isn't on Ken's menu. It's a girls' night, so gentlemen, please come dressed as ladies. In drag? By Mistress Julie? Now it's my turn. I'm scared. 
One quick transformation later, and the mistress of the manor is all set to welcome her guests. First to enter Julie's domain, Tupele. The door. Yes, mistress. Is it just me that thinks this is a bit weird? Oh, no, Tupele does as well. As soon as I saw him, I thought, OK, you know, she's going to... Julie's going to put on a show. Hello. She's the lady of the house. She's not going to open the, the, the door. <laughs> Evidently. Looking forward to the evening? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Good. Cheers. Cheers. You may go now, Dad. Next to arrive is Ken, dressed as... Well, I have absolutely no idea. Limey is finally rendered speechless. Do come in. <laughs> A glass of champagne, please, not the That's furniture. Sure. Ah, nice shoes, Ken. Mm. <laughs> Special. They all wear these in Wigan. If I imagined him as a woman, it's not going to be that. Well, you haven't seen Phil yet. Or is it Bet Lynch's long-lost sister? Phyllis! Hello, cock. Come in. Oh, suits you, sir. Oh! Oh, watch it! Hey! Oh, jeez. <laughs> he did remind me of my grandmother. Slightly unshaven, but with a leer. So much like my own mother. Yes. This is wrong on so many levels. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have it on the other side next time? I think uh, Tapelli's found it slightly strange. She looks like a startled rabbit in the headlights, really. I've never seen anything like it. It's average yeah. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up... Cheers. Cheers. More weirdness. Quite scary. Yes, a bit like Psycho, isn't it? Bet <laughs> bites back. <laughs> Ow! Ow! That's a bit daft, see? And the results are revealed. Second. This is the world, according to Frankie Boyle's Tramadol Nights. It's an all singing, all swinging. What the freak? And all spinning land of make believe. Yeah. Frankie Boyle's Tramadol Nights. Tomorrow at 10 on 4. It's night four of our Coronation Street special and the Queen of Corrie, Julie Goodyear's turn to entertain her fellow thespians. Isn't this nice? <laughs> <laughs> A toast. <laughs> Phyllis Canita to Pele. Cheers. 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 I feel like a woman tonight. But you don't look like one. <laughs> <clears throat> In the kitchen, Julie's, um, well, slave, Dave, is putting the finishing touches to the glammed-up starter. And there we have it. Avocado and prawn cocktail with caviar. Big, aren't they? I'm pretty sure she's talking about the starter. Ladies, ladies, bon appetit. I can't wear this wig anymore. I mean, it's going to be avocado. You look like, um, Eddie Izzard. It does. It does look like Eddie Izzard. Suits you. You could get away with makeup. Suits you, sir. I just want you to enjoy my evening. That's how it should be. Really? Sort of evening of pleasure, laced with fear. <laughs> the prawns were good, a bit big for me. It was fine. The Russian delicacy, the caviar, was excellent. Oh, you uh, oh, that's lovely. Rise above it to ballet, rise above it. Ow! So that's how you keep Ken in check. Sorry. No more outbreaks of wind this evening. I'm sorry. Perfect. I don't think in any other regular day of my life would I have experienced a night like this. Well, I don't think anybody would. And it's not over yet because Dave the Slave is plating up a portion of meat and two veg. It smells lovely, doesn't it? Looks awful. And now the asparagus. How oh do Sauce. There we have it, marinated pork ribs. Bon appetit, everybody. Eyes front, Ken. Is that meat cooked nicely? Oh, yes. 
Ribs aren't really my thing. The, the meat tasted nice. They were, there's a, they were a little bit fatty. But the asparagus was possibly was left a little too long. Rather a lot too long. It was just a bit limp. Mm. <clears throat> well, this is nice. Quite scary. Yes, a bit like Psycho, isn't it? Mm. You see? The atmosphere's been strange. Very, very strange. We didn't actually manage to sort of chat so much. I felt like, you know, she was the school teacher and I was one of the good kids and they were the naughty kids. Mm. <sighs> ow, ow. That's a bit daft, see? So what are you doing at the weekend, anyone? <laughs> Anything normal? <laughs> What? Normality's gone. <laughs> like, this is a different world you're in now. <laughs> Look across the table. You can see, I'm trying not to. There's no missing that. Tabelli strikes me as a, the lady who, you know, paid a penny to go into the madhouse, the, um, you know, the asylum, to look at the nutters, and found that she was actually required to stay there for the whole day with them. Oh. Ah! Back in the kitchen, and Dave the slave is finishing off Julie's cheeky little dessert. Chocolate pots with a safari theme. I think you're going to enjoy this. I really do. The leopard is mine. And for Tapelli, Phyllis. <laughs> oh. Finita. With a horn. <laughs> <laughs> do enjoy. The chocolate pot itself, I thought, was really nice. It actually tastes like something that fell out of the Gnu's bottom. Is that nice? Mmm, it's nice, yeah. Could she really say anything else? Right, enough weirdness. It's time to find out if Julie can beat Phil's 23 and win the £1,000 cash prize for charity. The most entertaining factor was Julie, and for that reason alone, I love her. I'll give Julie a seven. I've had an interesting evening, um, a mixture of some good and maybe not so good things. The food was OK, so I'm going to give her a seven. And tonight, I'm going to give my friend Judy seven. Ooh. <laughs> oh, listen to the sound effects. Fourth, Ken. Oh, well, well done. done! Third, Julie. <gasps> Second, to Pelle! Yeah. Which means the first place is Philly! Oh, thank you! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh. He's well deserved, he's been a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed um, spending the week with him, so good for Phil. There you are, thank my you, darling. darling. Can I... oh, congratulations! <laughs> I've had a fantastic week. And I think Phil is a really, really worthy winner. Yeah, yeah. I've come forth a lot of time in my life, but I just hope I'm the fourth to die and not the first. I think it must have been close because everyone's night was enjoyable and everyone had a good time. Um, but, you know, cream rises. I won't miss Ken. <laughs> I just want to say to Oh, what? Bye. Bye. For quizzes, party games and guides to hosting your own dinner party, go to channel4.com slash forfood. A new series from this Thursday at 9 in which the famous return to a recreation of their old homes. Boy George is the first of our time travellers. Next night, Alan Carr, Misha Barton and Rupert Everett take on the host in Chris Moyle's Quiz Night. Imagine going back to the house where you grew up with everything inside exactly as it used to be. Some familiar faces are about to do just that. Oh, my God. I'm back in the 70s. Boy George confronts his past in The House That Made Me, a brand-new series, Thursday at 9 on 4.